Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Precalculus 12 video. Uh, we're still working on <clears throat> polynomials, and we're doing the last section today, which is on the remainder and the factor theorem. And the funny thing about all these theorems is they sound like they're so complicated or such a big deal, but you're going to come to see that it's actually quite, um, quite a simple concept to work on that I think you're going to like because it's going to make your life a little bit easier. And let me just remind you that when we're doing a chapter on polynomials or when we're working with polynomials, we are basically just trying to find different strategies or tools to break down polynomials that aren't already factored for us. So basically what we've been doing in this whole chapter is using different strategies to help break down big polynomials, kind of like this one, that we're not able to easily just factor out. So, remainder theorem. If p of x is divided by x minus a, the remainder is p of a. I find this stuff usually doesn't click for me until I see actual examples, so I'm going to assume that you're just like me. Let's dive into the first example. What is the remainder when p of x equals 2x to the 4 my 3x cubed plus 2x minus 3 is divided by x minus 2. Okay, scrolling back, according to this, the remainder is p of a, so it should be if, if we have that it's divided by x minus 2, then what it's telling me is that I want to figure out p of 2. So I always take the opposite of what I see listed for my factor there, and what this is telling me is to simply take it and plug it in, and it's going to spit out the remainder for me. So I just plug in 2 everywhere that I see an x here. So it's going to be 2 to the 4 minus 3 times 2 cubed plus 2 times 2 minus 3. And I'm going to give you time. You could pause if you want to to work your way through the math, but I know you all know how to do this. What we end up getting here is that p of 2 is equal to 9 and what this is saying is that 9 is our remainder. So see what I mean? Calling it the remainder theorem makes it sound all fancy and complicated but what it's telling you is whatever you're dividing by take the root of it plug it into your polynomial and it's going to spit out the remainder. That's a simplified way of looking at the remainder theorem. Okay, so we are going to move a little bit quickly because I feel confident that you probably got that in one shot. So the next one, for what values of k will the remainder be 5? Um, okay, so what I would say is for you at this point to hit pause, try this on your own. Although it's different than the last one, it's just an application of the concept we just learned. So give it a try on your own. When you're ready, hit play again and you can see the result. So it's sort of just working well similarly to the last one because what we're going to want to do here is we still do want to plug in our p of 2 and when we go to plug it in though we're going to find that we have 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 squared plus 2 plus k. So just to make it super clear let me use my different colors to show you all I've done is everywhere that I had x, I plugged in the 2 that was there. And so we also know, though, that the remainder is 5 when this is the case. So yeah, I have p of 2 here. I could wipe that out, or I'm just going to write it on the other side. Technically, I shouldn't really do that, but you get the sense or idea of what it is that's going on. So basically, again, we could work our way through the algebra and we just want to figure out what k is equal to on its own. So I'm going to, maybe I shouldn't have done that over there. I'm going to write it down here. So, and you know what, I'm going to color code it so that you know exactly what's happening here. I'm just rearranging them, getting rid of this p of 2 and I'm plugging in the 5 there because that's ultimately what it would be equal to. And then working our way through the rest of it, we would get 8 minus 8 plus 2 plus k. So we're just collecting our, like, well, that's gone. So basically 5 minus 2, so our k value is equal to 3. 
Okay, so that's it for the remainder theorem. So you see what I mean? It sounds like a big deal. I feel like this is true of so many of the things that we will be doing throughout the year. They sound like a big deal, but it's actually, math is all about simplifying things. So it's actually quite the opposite. Even if it sounds complicated, rest assured that it's actually there to make your life easier, to allow you to simplify things. On that note, moving on to the factor theorem. So hopefully you're believing what I'm saying to you, that the remainder theorem was actually, was actually pretty easy. I think you're going to find that with the factor theorem as well. It's the direct result of the remainder theorem. If P of X is divided, <coughs> sorry, by X minus A, and there's no remainder, that means X minus A is a factor of P of X. Let me put that in simple terms. We take this, minus 2, plug it in. If it spits out an answer of 0, it's just telling us that this X plus 2 must be a factor. So let's put this into action. In fact, I feel like perhaps after reading that and me explaining it, you could hit pause, try this on your own without me even going through it, and then hit play when you're ready so that you can see the result. So what this is saying is we want to do P of negative 2, because we always take the opposite of what we see here, is equal to 3 times, okay, it's a little ridiculous that I'm doing this, but I'm going to do it anyways. We want to plug in that negative 2 there into here, um, and it's going to be plus 4 times. Again, we plug in negative 2 there, and then it's going to be minus 3 and then we plug in negative 2 there, and then it's going to be minus 3 times x, but instead of x, we plug in negative 2 there again, and then the whole thing is minus 10. So that's basically what we're doing. We're simply plugging it in, and we are working our way through the algebra here. So here, we, when we multiply this all out, we get 48 minus 32, 48 there, 32 there when we work our way through there, and this just gives us minus 12 when we get to there, and this just gives us plus 6 when we get to there, and then we still have the minus 10 at the end. You can see as you work your way through this, minus 12 minus, that it's all cancelling out, and we found that P of negative 2 is equal to 0. So, it says, is this a factor? So the answer, therefore, would be yes. x plus 2 is a factor of this polynomial. And although I didn't ask for it, I'm going to take this a step further to show you why we would even want to figure this out. Because you know that this always leads to something else. I'm teaching you little itty-bitty skills that will help you to take bigger questions and be able to break them down and work with them. So let's go ahead and do that with this question, even though I didn't ask for it, or even though the question doesn't ask for it. So now that I know that that is a factor, I can use that to help me to break down this polynomial. So in the past or in the last few videos, you have been told what the factors are. This time we had to take it one step further to figure out if this is a factor or not. Now that we know, we can use our synthetic division skills to help break this down. So just a reminder, check to see this is in descending order in our polynomial, which it is. So I just remember, take the coefficients from each of them. So that, 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 and that, and write them down here. So I have three, four, minus three, another minus three, and a minus 10. And I set it up down here. And remember with synthetic division, we're always adding here. And our first move is to bring the 3 down. And then we go around in this um, cyclical sort of pattern to work our way through this. So I'd do 3 times negative 2, and I would get negative 6. And then I would add these. So I get minus 2 down here, and then I do minus 2 times minus 2. So I'd get positive 4, negative 3, plus 4 and I would get 1 down here. Then I do 1 times negative 2, and here I would get negative 2. Then I'm doing negative 3 plus negative 2, so I get negative 5, 
and I go back in that circle to negative 5 times negative 2, which is positive 10. And you see when I add these, it worked out perfectly so that we have no remainder. So if I were to take this and break it down, what this is saying is my original polynomial, which I'm going to write in green, so this one up here, p of x, is 3x to the 4 plus 4x cubed. I just realized in the video it may not be showing you this because it's been acting funny. That's okay, I'm going to scroll it up in just a second to show you once I have it all written down. So this was our original polynomial, and what we just found or figured out from doing all our work is that this is actually equal to the thing that we found to be a factor, which was our x plus 2 from up here. So I can rewrite this to say x plus 2, and then plus the other thing that we broke down down here. And remember from down here, if I started with x to the 4, and I've factored out this x plus 2, then I must go down a degree in my, with my um, variable. So then this must be 3x cubed instead of x to the 4 minus 2x squared plus x minus 5. So it has allowed me to break this down a little bit and then we could do some work to break this down even further but I just wanted to show you how this all ties in together. We won't break this down further. We'll leave it like that for now. But again, the, the, what I want you to get from this is that the factor theorem is just if you plug in a value and you find the remainder is zero, then we can say that, that the value you plugged in is a factor. Which takes us to the last one, which is the rational root theorem. So again, like everything else, this definition makes it look like it's a complicated big deal, but I can assure you it actually really isn't. Um, we're, I'm going to show you that with an actual example. So, But I am going to quickly run through this. Rational numbers are basic fractions in the form of a over b, where a and b are integers and b can't be zero. We know that. The denominator can never be zero. That's all that's saying. We want divisors or denominators that give a remainder of zero. So let's look at what that actually means. Okay, so taking a look at this, um, we would want, it says basic fractions in the form of a over b. So let's take a look at factors. and zeros. So what could these factor out to? So do you see that it could be 3x plus 1 and x, well sorry, plus or minus 1 and x plus or minus 8. This could be 3x plus or minus 2 and this could be x plus or minus 4. This could be 3x plus or minus 4 or x plus or minus 2. Let me say this. There is no way you're going to do this each and every time. I'm just trying to show you, clearly lay out where this is all coming from. So all I'm doing here is listing all the possible factors that, like the way that this could be factored using the AC method. So then the zeros are what we would pick out of here. That would be plus or minus 1 third from this first part here. And the other one would be plus or minus 8. This would be plus or minus 2 thirds from right here. And the other one would be plus or minus 4. This would be plus or minus 4 over 3 from over here. And the other one would be plus or minus 2. And this one would be plus or minus 8 over 3 from right here. And the other one would be plus or minus 1. So what this is saying, and again, don't worry, you are not expected to do this each and every time. I'm just trying to really lay it out for the first one. The possible zeros can be found by the possible factors of 8. So that 8 is the number that's at the end, divided by the possible factors of 3, which is the a value in our quadratic or the, the leading coefficient. 
So all of these things that we got over here, we could get by just looking at the last value, all the factors of the last value divided by all the factors of the first value. And we're going to be strategic or smart in what we select as our option because there, that's a lot of choices to pick from. You're going to analyze the equation to help figure out which one's the easiest one to pick. So to clear up what on earth we are doing right now, in order to use the remainder theorem and factor theorem, um, so far we've been told what the factors are, so it was nicely set up for us. So this is setting us up so that if we're told nothing, how do we even begin to pick choices that are smart, like educated choices, that will make this easier for us to work with. So we want to pick a factor to plug in and test to see if the remainder is zero. So this requires a little bit of guessing and checking, but we can be smarter about our guessing and checking. Instead of just checking like all of these values, we could analyze the equation and try to pick some that are easier to work with. Um, let's try one. So if, for example, we want to test x plus 2, so if I look at this, it's I always like to choose, whenever possible, I want to pick 1 at the bottom because that's going to make my life easier. I don't want to plug in a fraction, and you'll find almost always that it's going. one of those will work. So I've just taken the 2 from up here and the 1 from down here, so that would be p of negative 2. And when we plug it into our equation, if you can remember what it was, 3x squared plus 2x minus 8. So it would be 3 instead of x squared minus 2 squared plus 2x, so that 2 times negative 2, minus 8. And when we look at this, look at that. I clearly knew what I was doing, but I picked one that works. So it ends up giving us 0. Of course, you might have to go through this two or three times to find one, but you're simply plugging it in. You could just punch it into your calculator. Now that I found that that works, that means I can use this minus two in synthetic division to help break this down. Three, two, and minus eight, I'm getting from this thing here, right? So from our original equation, I'm just using that to break this down. And then I would go through my usual steps to figure this out. 3 times that is negative 6. Add them top to bottom, we get negative 4. Negative 4 times that is positive 8. And look at that, they cancel. So from this, it's telling me that my 3x squared plus 2x minus 8, so my original polynomial, can be broken down to this factor here. Actually, let me do it in blue. So that x plus 2 times the thing I just found, which is right here, so it's times 3x minus 4. So that shows you how we would come up with this. I've purposely chosen a quadratic because you already know how to factor this and wouldn't have to go through these steps. So you can use that knowledge to help double check your answers with this one. Okay, so just to sort of summarize, uh, the rational root theorem again, it's possible rational zeros would be the factors of the constant divided by the factors of the lead coefficient. So the stuff in the green boxes is just different ways of summarizing and putting this simply so that it's easier for you to understand. Okay, so let's put this into action and try one out. So if we have, find the zeros of f of x equals x cubed, etc., etc. Um, let's figure out how to do this. Um, so our, again, you would not want to actually write these all out, but so that you clearly understand what we're doing and where we're getting this from, we would want to take the factors of our constant, so factors of 12 divided by the factors of 1, because that 1 would be coming from, there's nothing in front of here, so that we know is just a one. So this is all stuff you'd be doing in your head. You just wanna look at the last term and divide by this term and try to come up with numbers that are easy to work with. But to put this here, oh, that's the fan. Let me turn that off. I'm in the math office if you're wondering what's happening here. 
Um, so we would want to take and list off all the factors of this. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12, all divided by just plus or minus 1. So again, you don't have to actually write this out. I am just doing this so you clearly understand where I'm getting this from. Because I think if I skip steps in the video, you're going to be confused. So um, we can check and just try one. So we can try, we always want to keep things simple. So it's obviously simple to start with the smaller numbers and work your way up. If they don't work, then you can work your way up. But let's check x minus 1. And how I could check that is simply plugging it in. Um, if we plug it into here, we're trying to check to see, is that going to give us a, fact, a remainder of 0? So I just have a 1 there. I'd have minus 9 plus 20 minus 12. So it does give us 0. So I know that it works. So that was me doing the remainder theorem. And because it gave me zero, I can say it's the factor theorem. And then now I can use that to break down my actual polynomial. So if it's x minus 1, I can use 1. And then I can use the coefficients from here to help break this down. So I would take the 1 from up here, the minus 9, then the plus 20, and then the minus 12. I didn't remember that you need a, a space holder if there's if it's not going in descending order, but this one is good to go. So I can just write them exactly as I see them. I would move down this one and I'd go through my synthetic division. So I multiply this out, I get one here, negative nine plus one is minus eight. Negative eight times one gives me negative eight. 20 plus minus eight, so it's gonna give me positive 12. And then, tw so again, I'll just show you quickly. Again, remember it's 12 times one. Then I put the answer down here and I get 12, which gives me, look at that, zero, which I was expecting because I used the remainder and factor theorem to check this out. And so what this means is I just got, well, I already had the X minus one from up here. And then I can take this and rewrite it to say it must be x squared minus 8x plus 12. And then we could use synthetic division and go through that stuff again. But look at this. We know this type of factoring. We know that this two numbers that multiply 12 add to negative 8. So we can use that to say it must be x minus 6 and x minus 2. So we've factored it out. What did the question ask for? It said find the zeros, so always a good idea to go back and check, like did I even answer it? Which so far, no we haven't. So here's our answer. x equals 1 from here, 2 from here, I just like to do it in order, and 6 from here. So that's our actual answer. So you get to see the reason why we've learned all these different theorems and all the stuff in this chapter, actually, it's to take these big, huge, complex polynomials and to be able to pick out the roots and break them down into a factored form. And all of these theorems that we learned allow us to do that and give us the skills to do that. Okay, um, we're going to leave it at that. This next one you can hit pause and try this on your own. I am just going to give you the solutions for this because I've been given feedback that um, I need to shorten my videos a little bit. So here is the solution. There, here are the zeros that you would find from after doing all the theorems and breaking this down. And of course, if you're struggling or have any questions with this, um, send me a message on Microsoft Teams or email me at any time and I'm quite happy to help you with that. And here is your suggested work for the day. And that's the end. Great job. That's the end of the entire chapter.